Hi everyone, so I've got a, a single board computer here uh, that I picked up on eBay for I think $25. Um, and what it's got is uh, 128 megabytes of RAM, uh, a Pentium 3 850 megahertz CPU, I think it's uh, Katmai Core, um, the Intel Memory Hub, which I think most people call the uh, Northbridge um, PC speaker, PCI to ISA uh, interface, uh, LSI Logic uh, SCSI controller. It's actually got uh, ultra wide SCSI and SCSI 2, and then uh, two IDE ports, um, floppy port, parallel port, serial ports, and two USB ports. Um, a chips technologies uh, M69000 video controller, which I've, I've never seen one of these before, but they are, they are uh, MS DOS, Windows 95, 98 compatible, and then the Intel uh, 10100. Uh, Ethernet controller, and it's actually got um, a mouse, keyboard, Ethernet, and a VGA. So, what do you do with these? I hear you ask. Well, so you stick them into what's called a industrial backplane. Got one of these here. You can get these on eBay for anywhere between ten and several hundred dollars. They're, they're really not worth much. At least these older ones. Uh, maybe they're worth something to people who need older machines to do industrial work. Um, but the uh, motherboard just plugs right into this slot right here. Like this. And uh, right here you have uh, ATX power input. Uh, it did have an AT uh, power input as well. I took that out because um, the more modern uh, ATX uh, power supplies the connector hangs over just slightly. I removed this, and I can put it back if I ever find an AT power supply, which are, you know, getting exceedingly rare, as it feels like. Uh, or you can wire it directly to a DC bus. Um, so if you have a, a factory floor that has a supply for 12 volt um, and 5 volt, uh, you can wire it directly to here. Um, and it's got some headers for 12 volt fans. And then this guy right here is basically the uh, power switch for ATX. Um, and the way I have it wired here, uh, if I switch the ATX power supply on, it's just going to switch the whole machine on. Um, but you could wire it up to a button to switch it on and off. Uh, this uh, motherboard has access to all the slots on here. And um, this is actually part of a specification called uh, PIC-MG. You can see the logo there. Um, this is the 1.2 spec, I think. The 1.0, 1.1, I think, are just ISA only. And there's a 1.3 spec that has uh, PCI Express. And you can actually buy uh, industrial single board computers that um, come with uh, support for 10th gen Intel uh, CPUs. Um, so the way it works, uh, all I gotta do is get a power supply out. I have one sitting right here. This is a power supply I pulled out of my uh, gaming PC because uh, I upgraded it to 850 watts. Um, so I have an ATX power supply header for motherboard and then this guy will be for the hard drive. And for hard drive I'm going to use uh, this thing. Um, so this is a IDE compact flash adapter. Um, this time, though, I'm going to, uh, because I don't want to involve CD-ROM drives or floppy drives or anything like that, I'm going to install Windows 98 onto a virtual machine or maybe an emulator of some kind. This is all kind of untested. I don't know if it will work or not. And then use a tool like DD to copy that image to the CF card uh, and then boot it up. Let's see if that works. So one of the things I wanted to try was installing Windows 98 using a tool like uh, Box. Um, I originally tried Hyper-V, but um, apparently Hyper-V doesn't work so well with uh, Windows 98, which is okay. Um, I mean, it works well enough until it needs keyboard input, then it doesn't work. Uh, so I used a tool called Box, which is not a hypervisor, it's actually an emulator. Um, so it's not nearly as quick as a tool like Hyper-V or VMware. Um, that was pretty much the only thing I had to, to make it work. So 
So there's a tool you can use to write uh, .img files back to devices raw called dd. Um, and you can run it on Windows, but if you don't know how to use that or uh, don't want to bother with using it or don't have a Linux machine or a Mac, um, you can use the Raspberry Pi imager and it actually supports any removable media uh, and it supports the img files that uh, Box makes. So this is the uh, CF card actually booting on the physical machine. Um, I recorded it with the OSSC and uh, my reaction was actually one of dismay and shock. I wasn't sure if this was going to work and it did. Um, and in fact, after just detecting all the devices, I had a working Windows 98 PC basically. So after a bit of, uh, a, well, a lot of hardware detecting, um, it seems to have finished. I've got two entries for the keyboard here. I'm not sure entirely why. I, I was playing around with this earlier and I found if I deleted one of them, it, it still tried to detect both. So I'll just leave it for now. But the uh, Chips and Technology VGA adapter, uh, it seems okay. It actually seems pretty snappy. Um, well, the Windows keys seem to work. In case anyone's curious about the uh, specifications. MS Info actually was a bit more useless back then. can exit to MS-DOS, try some actual MS-DOS games out. I can type. Oh, and by the way, the way I got these games on here is I basically just plugged the uh, CF card uh, into my Windows 10 PC and um, it sees it as a native device. Uh, and I just copy extract uh, files to it. it. Seems to work. At least I think it does. It's a maniac Mansion. Oh, mouse isn't working. I may need to uh, get a MS DOS. Um, let's see. DOS driver. I'm sorry, MS DOS mouse driver. I found um, that most MS DOS games seem to be timed perfectly fine. Maniac Mansion. This was a game made kind of really for XT slash AT, uh, you know, running 8 to 12 megahertz. And it's running just fine at 850 megahertz. Alt-X, by the way, a lot of MS-DOS games you can exit out of Alt-X. One, one game, whoops, I can't type today. One game I found that didn't work so well was Wing Commander, uh, which is a shame. Yeah, it uh, runs way too quick. Yeah. The interesting thing about Wing Commander is if you read the um, uh, good old games review for it, which of course is running on DOSBox, uh, the complaint is, is that there are certain parts of the game you have to speed the VM up and certain parts of the game you have to slow it down. Um, it's just a big mess. The, the machine the game was really kind of made for was a Intel 386 style um, I found that it actually runs way too quick on a 46 even. So one of the things I wanted to try uh, before I wrap this up and um, wait to find a case for this was to plop a sound card into it and see how well that worked. Uh, and sadly, I only have one of these. It's a Sound Blaster AWE32, I believe. Um, pretty nice sound card. 
I mostly use it for the Sound Blaster compatibility, not the AWE part. I'll remove this slot down maybe. Okay, so I've got uh, speakers plugged in. Um, there's a thing behind the monitor up on the desk. And let's switch this guy on. Or clunk noise from the speakers. To the OSC. First option there. Oh, actually detects it automatically. I'm not sure what I was expecting. It's been a while since I played this. Yeah, piece of cake. Dang, it's in your best and you're not able to shoot me on my ride. since I've played this game. Sister Act 3. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today and playing computers with me. Um, have a lovely Christmas. And uh, feel free to, to put comments in the comment box below. Um, especially if you have a, a beige case I can buy from you uh, to put all this into. Um, take care.